In an ever-growing sea of aluminum rectangles, it gets harder and harder to do something truly unique. This board today is a masterclass of design in mathematics. This is the Tenet 70 from Medici. So this is a 60% layout with an additional 10% section with an OLED screen. The trick here is that the entire board can be rotated to have the extra section on the right or the left. The group buy for this starts at the end of June. Pricing isn't finalized yet, but we're hearing 450 US on the all aluminum version or for the version we have here today with the brass lower, 520 to 550 US. So this is an end game price point for sure. The look of this board is what immediately got my attention. That extra section, the gorgeous lower weight. We've got uniform bezels, all exactly half the width of a keycap. There's an 18 millimeter front height and an eight degree typing angle. The lower like pedestal of the keyboard is a two piece weight. It's perfectly horizontally symmetrical. It's got a center mounted USB. The main section is sandblasted and coated brass. The center portion of the weight is sandblasted and then coated in 24 karat gold. Insane. There is a daughter board under here as well. This is an isolated gasket mount board and yo dog, we heard you like gaskets. So many gaskets. These not only isolate the plate assembly vertically from the top and bottom case, but they've also got these fixing gaskets located around the board. These ensure that plate assembly sits exactly where it needs to without having to make any little micro adjustments to the plate position. Included with the board, you also have your three hex keys, some extra hardware, and your plastic tweezers. These will be your closest homie throughout this build process, not only for all the different gaskets, which come in various sizes and locations, but also for the ribbon cables. We have a split PCB assembly with both a 60 and a 10% PCB with corresponding polycarbonate plates. No flex cuts, but it is thin at 1.2 millimeters. I'm using TX stabs today. We'll be using the shims included with the board because these are the standard 1.6 millimeter stabs. Interestingly, we have perky RGB here. All the sockets are south facing. This is hot swap, so the only config option is either stepped or regular caps lock, and it's ANSI only. ISO and the usual complement of split backspace and shifts are available if you go with the solderable version. PCB and software were both designed by the ANPRO team. As such, they use the Odin's lab softwares. They need something to control the board as well as the OLED screen. So it's not QMK or via supported. Those are both open source softwares, which means you can basically do whatever you want to them. For this software, you will be dependent on the team to release future updates and functionality. Fortunately, this is really impressive software. You have all the standard remapping and rebinding for up to two function layers, plus you have the tap effect from the ANPRO where you can tap a key to get a specific function or hold down that same key for a different function and you can adjust the timing. This was used to do arrows on the ANPRO too. It's always worked really well. You just like tap that control down and it moves like an arrow or you hold it down and it still works as control. There's also a full suite of RGB animations, which you normally never see on a custom at this level. And you can change the LED colors on the indicators. Plus you have the OLED screen that toggles functions like a simple clock, which is the cleanest and my personal favorite. You also have a PC stat screen, which doesn't appear to be completely functional yet. Kind of an overview dashboard and a key press per minute counter and custom text or JPEGs. You can load anything you like on here, provided that it works well for that horizontal layout. There is no GIF support though. You have these two keys here to toggle between the modes, or you can reassign these to whatever you want. The 10% section has arrows on the lower section with the toggle keys, and the upper six are like your standard layout on a TKL. I was a little confused when I first started playing with the layout because it makes a lot of sense to me on the right side of the board due to the arrows. I could see there being a pretty big market of people that wanted to move the numpad from the right to the left, but I wasn't sure how many people, even lefties, would really want to move their arrows arrows from the right to the left. As an editor, it makes perfect sense for me because I don't like to take my left hand off the keyboard or my right hand off the mouse. And the only time I ever have to do that is to access the dedicated arrows, which I do use a lot in editing the nudge clips. Due to this layout here, I can use this in Southpaw, use my arrows most of the time how I want, and to help ease that transition, I can set up those cluster tap arrows on the right side of the screen. As a video editor, it makes perfect sense for me. But you can use this for pretty much anything you want. You can put all your function row keys here, you can just use them all as different rebinds or macros. So inside the board for internal dampening, we've got a one millimeter thick pour on case foam and an injection molded silicone plate foam. And I'm a little disappointed in this choice. Acoustically, I think silicone works great in a mainly plastic board, like a polycarb case, but I've 
yet to hear it really in an aluminum board where it sounds really good to me. I would have much preferred pour on here, but we'll see. We also have a little ribbon cable and a couple JST cables to link the secondary PCB, the OLED screen, and the daughter board. And be careful with the cable alignment here. This thick pour on pad obscures the view of the connector and I broke the housing on it, putting it in for the first time. Luckily it still works. This is not what I would consider a beginner board. The assembly can be really challenging, especially the first time. And there's a few times I definitely wouldn't have got it without consulting the build guide. Even the order that you plug in the ribbons is pretty vital and having everything rotated properly for the layout you choose is essential. This extends to the bottom case too, which is why we end up with six case feet instead of four. The only really tricky part is getting the ribbon cable for the screen routed up and through this opening and into the connector. You also have to make sure you get the main JST cable routed through the channel in the weight because there's not a lot of room in the lower. Okay, so unsurprisingly, not a huge fan of the silicone in this board. The backspace there is probably my favorite sound. Overall, the board comes off pretty clacky. A lot of the low frequencies are muted there due to the silicone. I did try to offset this by using some Gateron Oil Kings in here. These are both filmed and lubed from the guys over at Lubed Switches. I like the board much better with all the silicone removed, except for the space bar, which sounded pretty off to me. So I decided to set this up in Southpaw Config, which is probably how I'd run it anyway. And I don't know what kind of sorcery is going on here, but the board sounds much better to me. Space bar included running in Southpaw with no silicone. First time with the TX stabs, by the way, and they are goaded. Super easy to tune, believe the hype on these. So the feel of the board is very stiff. There is zero flex or bounce, no indication really that it's even a gasket mount. Typing feel is subjective, so it's not bad per se. It just is what it is. Personally, I like a little more flex in my boards, but I love so much about this board that I'm willing to overlook that here. Because there's no flex or flex cuts on the PCB, that means the polycar plate really isn't adding anything here in terms of flex. So I would have liked to see this offered with an aluminum plate option and some pour on, so we could have at least tweaked the acoustics a little bit. That said, I do like the sound I ended up with provided that you're running in Southpaw and with no silicone in there. So overall, I'm really pretty happy with the board. It is pricey and it's pretty polarizing. You probably think this is either super dumb and overpriced or a genius and can't wait to throw money at it. For me, I'm in love with the design and it's a lot more functional in day-to-day -day use than I thought it would be. It's not my favorite typing feel and the sound is kind of neutral for me. It's not great, but it's not poor provided you're going to run it the way I have it set up. And the software was a pretty surprising high point for me and I almost never have anything good to say about software. Keyboards have just blown up so hard Hard over the past couple years, there's so much out there that it gets harder and harder to find something truly unique. So when I see a design like this and it's executed to this level, it's brilliant. And speaking of brilliant, oh yeah. We're doing it. Brilliant is an online learning platform centered around STEM content. They put a big focus on interactive learning. I find myself learning in more than one way at the same time because I'm actually doing and interacting with these concepts versus the passive repetitive route of reading and memorization. They have great courses on the basics of STEM, but they also have much more advanced and up to the minute courses like algorithm fundamentals. If you have a grasp on coding basics, stacking it with an understanding of algos can be a really beneficial toolkit if you're trying to realize the next new app or idea. Brilliant is a great way to learn at your own pace. It's low pressure, it's not intimidating. Everything's broken down into short sections so you can learn when you have a few minutes and if something isn't clicking, they actually walk you through a detailed explanation of why. And the best part, it's free to get started. They have a seriously impressive catalog too, so whether you need to brush up on basics or you're chasing down that next killer app, Brilliant has you covered. When you're ready to get smarter, you can join me and a community of over 11 million learners and educators by going to brilliant.org slash badseedtech. And as an added bonus, the first 200 of you to do so can save 20% on their annual premium subscription. Big thanks to Brilliant for continuing to support the channel and thank you so much for your time. You should check out the Click Clack IO Discord for updates on the tenant and the capsule, which is the board we'll be taking a look at in just a couple days. It's a really great community and you can join by clicking right here, I think. That's it for today and I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.